Welcome back everyone. If you're new here, my name is Brian Jenks, and today I'm going to tell you where I've been lately and what the heck is that thing. So I've had a lot of trouble creating content lately for several different reasons. Um, I have executive dysfunction because of ADHD, so that's just a whole barrel of fun. Um, but I've also been coming to the end of a term at school, and I've been procrastinating too long because, see, aforementioned point about executive dysfunction, and I need to get some classes done, otherwise uh, it's going to be bad. Uh, so that, and I've had a, you know, it's the holidays, so I'm spending a lot of time with family and things, and I've uh, been kind of preoccupied with a big project I've <laughs> kind of fell into because of hyperfixation. Uh, that thing. So that is my home server. And I'm gonna give you a tour of what the heck is it, why did I buy it, and uh, what's in it. So if that sounds interesting, stay tuned. The best ways to support the channel are, if you're going to do it on an ongoing basis, GitHub sponsors because they take no fees, followed by Patreon. If you're gonna do like a one-time thing, buy me a coffee, PayPal are just fine. And if you just wanna support me without any money involved, the best thing you can do is like, comment, subscribe, share the video, and that's it. So what did I get a home server for? So there are several things that I've wanted to try out since I started taking my Network Plus certification, you know, my CompTIA Network Plus, for part of my degree program at Western Governors University. And I suddenly really started getting interested in networking and running my own services. And namely, one of the strong things that I wanted to do that really was a driver for this is I wanted to host my own home database, a uh, SQL database or something like that, through a VPN so I can access my database from wherever I am on my phone or something and use my own applications to write data to my own database. Why? Because I want to, because I'm insanely curious and I like to build things. So there's my justification. But uh, for the purpose ultimately of building my own applications and databases and things to help me manage my ADHD and externalize my brain, uh, a brief example, I could just have a table for the people that I meet and the pertinent information that I want to remember about them. This is the date of their anniversary. This is how many years I've known them, how I met them, when their birthday is, uh, things like that so that I can, I can better improve my ability to be a better friend and person just because I won't be quite so forgetful and neglecting of my relationships. So you can set up different automations to trigger things like if it's within seven days of their birthday, send myself an email so that I, oh yeah, it's their birthday in seven days. So that gives me enough time to plan, get a gift, do something, show that I care. Uh, that's just like a brief example of something that I want to do. So this is just part of this grand scheme project that I wanted to do. And plus I get to learn and uh, get hands-on experience for my certification and use the stuff I'm learning in my certification in an actual real world application. And the stuff I do here is gonna carry over to what I do at work because I work in IT. So there's a lot of reasons. Uh, those are like the you know, top reasons, but there's like 20 years or more services that I wanna get running and self host and just play around with. And I wanna just play and learn. So that's why. As for the how, well, thank you, YouTube, um, I kind of, I'm taking a loan out to do all this, but uh, hopefully YouTube continues to be very kind to me and I can use that to fund my ability to play with things like this and then make content about it. So yeah, so what is a server rack, a home server, home network, and what's in mine? So as for the what, um, everything that I have is on my kit.co, which is just a front face for Amazon affiliates. So like if you buy anything through clicking the link, it doesn't cost you anything extra. It gives me a very small kickback. Um, so if you did that, it'd be helpful, but not necessary. Um, but I have a grouping groupings of things on here that are by project or relevance. So this home server project is everything that I've really purchased so far for this thing, uh, this whole project. And so I got a SysRax server, uh, server rack and uh, brief aside about them, not sponsored. They're very, seem on social media, a very small company, but uh, really love the product. There was some issues with shipping, especially during like the holiday season. I got some stuff that was the wrong size, shipping error, it happens. Uh, some stuff got damaged, it happens, but the company handled it very gracefully. They not only shipped me the correct size parts 
and a you know apology free item from their catalog which was not necessary but cool and basically they handled the situation with the utmost grace and politeness uh, got me taken care of assured like figured out information that i thought i had the wrong like door size or something for the back it turns out i had the completely opposite or incorrect top and bottom piece so they they figured that out and made sure that i got the right thing that i needed so very big kudos to them and they expedited the shipping of the last few items because, you know, holidays. There was a big delay and there was a lot of stuff going on. So they got me that stuff ASAP so that I could get my project completed uh, and not having to wait too long. So big, big kudos to them. But as for the quality of the item, it's absolutely awesome. I love this thing. And uh, I was looking at one of their smaller models that was like soundproof-ish according to like some specs and whatever, and it was way more expensive than this one, and this one is is taller than me. So if you've been following the channel, you might have know by now that I'm actually really tall. Um, for US people, I'm a six foot six. For metric, I'm 198 centimeters tall. I'm a big guy, and this thing is taller than me, and I have to tip, tilt it over to get it out of my door frame because it's taller than the door frame. Uh, so it's a big boy. So looking at the rack in detail, there's a lot of things that I loved about this and why I got this one. Uh, it, everything locks, so you got side panels on two on each side, a front door, a back door for access, and everything locks. And the top has a temperature gauge that will tell you the internal temperature and four fans on the top of this thing to facilitate internal cooling on top of whatever else the actual components inside already do. So it's awesome. It's got casters, it's got stability legs to also even out if there's any sort of warping on anything, and ventilation on the front. It's really, really cool to deal with, and it really makes building it a lot easier. The directions were a bit hard to follow. Um, I did have to do several several times I had to take some things apart and re-put them together, but you know, I built enough IKEA furniture that if you pay close enough attention to visual details, it's it's doable. But the directions could use some work, Sysrax. Sorry, but I do love the product. So looking through some of the images, uh, there's a four fans. It's got cable access in the top through this one uh, mesh screen thing. It's got like a bunch of you know fibers to keep dust out, but that's one cable access and there's two of those in the bottom. And you can see like the internal view here. Uh, the rack that I got was 32 inches in depth, uh, which is just a little bit less than what can fit my uh, HP server that I bought, but I'm not broken up about it. It's fine. I can't put the back door on, but I'm I'm okay with how this has this went. Um, overall, this thing is relatively awesome. So this is what, and I told you why and how. But what am I? What is a server rack? So a server rack is really just a giant metal cage with square shaped holes uh, for a type of mounting apparatus called a cage nut, which is kind of like a normal, you know, bolt and screw on nut, but it uses a little tensioned uh, prong like thing. And uh, yeah, you so you put these cage nuts in there to then mount things, you put the flanged ears on top, and screw things through the holes on to, into the cage nuts. And this helps you actually mount things inside the rack. So it's really just a very standardized ish way of holding and containing and organizing uh, networking and technical equipment. And a lot of things follow a, you know, several things follow uh, standards so that usually things are about 19 inches, you know, in, I guess, width, width. So inside the front of the rack, uh, this front area, the mounting area is 19 inches. So pretty much everything I have is 19 inches and it follows that sort that standard. So it's a really great way of putting in your gear, organizing things, and having everything follow a consistent uh, standard. And it's just really cool. So the nerd factor is there. All right, so this is what the server rack looks like. I got a panel there, shelf, patch panels, blanks, PDU, another uh, drawer slide out panel, a drawer, a KVM console, the actual server, UPS, a lot of stuff. A lot of blanking panels to keep it just looking aesthetic, but you know, I don't want a uh, bad airflow going through there, but also I just wanted to look like it's semi-complete, so that's why I have all the blanking panels too. Um, but more gear means more stuff is going to be switched out when I get there. 
All right, so let's actually get a tour through the server rack piece by piece, looking at what I got inside of it and like what my reasoning and methodology was behind setting up my rack this way at this current point in time. Now I've done a uh, layout of my entire server rack and uh, let me show you that. So I have a multi-stage plan and the prices on this don't match up to what I've actually spent or am going to spend. A lot of this stuff is just, you know, snapshot in time just to capture it to sort of plan and divvy up some phasing. But uh, this is what I've kind of planned thus far for like a three, four, five stage process of where I want the rack to go in the you know first beginning stages of this project. Um, ultimately, I do want to get a Synology NAS for an actual like backup and uh, you know two is one, three is two kind of a backup uh, system. And I also wanted to get Ubiquiti's uh, Protect security camera system. So that's like one of the big things I'm gonna be doing. So I'm gonna be running uh, Cat6 cabling throughout my house so I can have everything power over ethernet, uh, backing up to an actual um, dedicated footage server so I can keep like a 30 days of all the 4K footage from every camera. And uh, lots of big plans for that and uh, just Ubiquiti stuff in general. I need to get a Ubiquiti switch because I wanna use um, use them for that, UniFi, Ubiquity, I forget which which term you use, but them. Um, yeah, and a couple other things. I want then I want to see like how my, much my server right now, um, I have a, yeah, HP, HP ProLiant DL360P generation eight server. So it has eight, two and a half inch um, serial attached SCSI drives. And so uh, it can take up to like two terabytes each. So maybe about 16 terabytes max capacity for the entire server. And that's kind of just to see how much server I need for what I want to do and how much more of an upgrade do I need to do. Um, but then I got stuff like information on noise level. I'm like at a 30, so it's not too bad. I have a noise limiter, noise gate filter thing on my microphone here in my studio. So that way, like even though the rack is right behind me, um, you shouldn't be able to hear any of the whirring um, through the microphone. So thanks for that. Uh, new audio setup helps too. Some helpful links. Um, our home lab is a really cool place. I'm starting to lurk there some more. Um, and then I've had some several iterate, several iterations of this 42U, uh, 42 unit server, uh, server rack and how I wanted to structure things. So this was like my first attempt and I reorganized and I reorganized again. This is the current state. Um, so like this is where everything is laid out in the units and then I want to put my switch um, there. But uh, this is like how I'm kind of tracking where where the rack goes and where I want it to go. So the server rack is actually 42U, uh, so 42 rack units. And it's pretty pretty tall. It's taller than me and I'm very tall. So this is actually my layout and I kind of planned it in here first. But let's actually do a video walkthrough and I'll show you what is in here and what was my thought process behind it. So this is the rack and I have an LED strip I put in there, which is really awesome. I just run the wire through the back into this compartment where I have a PDU feeding some items, my modem, my uh, Raspberry Pi Plex media server, which should be upgraded to something else. Um, moving down, that's actually a slide out shelf, but then I have my first patch panel, three blanks and another patch panel on the center one is actually where I want to put the UniFi Ubiquiti switch. Then I have the another PDU on the front um, more blanks. And then I have this really cool swivel door latches closed. And then this pull out shelf where I can actually stand and do work. And you can see, I've been working on some stuff here where I actually am making my own, uh, cat six cabling stuff. I learned how to do in my certification. So I got all the, most of the stuff there to do that. And I've actually all the cat six cables I'm using right now with this setup, I did make myself. So that's really cool that I learned how to do that. Um, and I have this drawer for storage of you know, server rack, server rack components and stuff. So this is like all a bunch of bolts and cage nuts and other things. And then I have a bunch of Cat6 cabling hoods, the actual jacks, the RJ45 jacks, um, everything I need in there to, you know, all the little bits and bobs and stuff to organize. And then that's a drill bit to make the hole in my ceiling to run the cabling through the attic. Uh, more blanking panels just to keep airflow and spacing. Um, I have a KVM console. This was just a guilty pleasure buy. I wanted this solely so I could, yeah, so I don't have to remote into the server, but also because like you see the movies, I'm hacking the mainframe. That's that's really why, it's just because it's cool. And this is my, my server, the HP DL360P generation eight uh, server. 
and it pulls out. It's about 40 pounds. It's crazy to pull out of there. Um, one of the rails is incorrect. And I had to get that shipped. That's why I can pull it out with one hand. But then I have a blanking panel, a stable sh uh, static shelf, and then the actual um, uninterrupted power supply or UPS at the bottom, which keeps everything running should the power go off. So that's like the, yeah, that's that, where everything's laid out. Um, it's, it's pretty cool as it is. And uh, yeah, this KVM console is really just here because I can swivel around in my chair, pull it out, log on to the server, and you know do whatever maintenance and anything that I need to do for it. It is just really cool, and I wanted it for the cool factor. Uh, you can see that I still have Windows Server on it. Um, I need to actually replace this. I've been wanting to play with Debian, uh, just as a you know get some Linux distro on there, uh, meant for server grade processing and stuff, and see what I can do with it and kind of just see how far I can push this server. But yeah, it's a really nice thing to use. I got, uh, I don't have a KVM switch for this thing. I have a KVM switch for my personal desk. So I switch between my work and my personal laptops. But this thing, I only have one server at the moment and it's totally fine. So this was a guilty pleasure purchase and it's just really cool. Take it out, put it back in and the door can close and it's just, really cool. So yeah, like I was saying, um, on my kit page for the home server project, and all the links will be in the, like the pinned comment and stuff, uh, you can see like pretty much everything I have in the rack and that I really kind of picked up for this entire project. Um, start to finish, everything that I really got is here and represented. Overall, it's been really, really fun doing stuff with hardware and in enjoying working with all of this. And you know, if you are interested in stuff like this and got the you know the money to kind of delve into this realm, it's it's a really fun thing, and I'd highly recommend it because it's really fun. And if you're curious about more of the services and things that I'm trying to run on my server, I have a bunch of stuff here on this uh, page in my public notes on my devlog about networking. And there's like a bunch of different services and things that I want to do: VLANs for my IoT devices, a Pi hole, uh, virtual machines, Docker containers my actual own database, whether I wanted to stick with Postgres or do a Docker container with Microsoft SQL Server or a VM for Microsoft SQL Server. I don't know yet, VPN, my own PFSense firewall. So look, need to look into Nextcloud, a um, bunch of different things. There's a lot of stuff I've been looking at, Grafana, Loki for logging aggregation. It's just, it never ends. It's just endless nerding out stuff. So if you're interested in some of these things and like what I'm gonna try and put on to uh, my home server and like why I'm doing any of this. This is a lot of the information right here. And so link to this will be in the pinned comment. So hopefully you found this interesting. This is one of the things I've been busy with lately uh, between school and a lot of the other responsibilities, the holidays and nerding out on this project right here. Uh, it's It's been a lot of time invested into this. So I haven't really been the greatest about uploading content, but um, I've got some some things going on. I got some plans. I got several scripts I want to get through and uh, More videos coming. I'm hopefully trying to outsource some elements of the YouTube stuff so I can actually consistently post more and have more content output uh, We'll see how the, any of this goes and just hopefully I can Keep delivering things that y'all want to see and a big shout out and thank you to all of the github sponsors and patreon patrons who support this channel this is what makes it so fun to do this, all of this YouTube and everything is people who enjoy the work enough to sponsor it and show their support. So if you'd like to sponsor the channel, GitHub sponsors is the best way followed by Patreon and I will catch you all in the next one.